Joe from iteachapple.org. iteachapple is a mobile service in San Diego which helps people with their Apple devices. We also assist with troubleshooting tech issues and we teach people how to use the various software. And not just Apple software, but other software that is built for the Apple platform, such as one of my favorite programs, Hyper Studio 5. Perhaps some of the teachers out there will remember that in the 1990s, Hyper Studio was the number one classroom tool for creating dynamic, interactive, multimedia classroom projects. Unfortunately, the program was sold to a company who then sold it to another company, and then Apple came out with OS X operating system, which meant that Hyper Studio would only run in classic mode. <laughs> Remember classic mode? So Hyper Studio kind of died out. Luckily, a few years ago, Software Makia purchased the rights to Hyper Studio. They, in turn, hired the original author of Hyper Studio, fellow San Diegan Roger Wagner, to lead a team of developers to create, to recreate Hyper Studio for the 21st century. So, it's back and better than ever. It's compatible with all the latest technologies and Web 2.0 tools. Hyper Studio 5 is also very easy for all ages to use. It has one setup screen, which includes all the multimedia tools you could ever need, such as graphics, paint, animation tools, video, audio, desktop publishing, and so much more. And although Hyper Studio is great for adults and children alike, the teachers out there will appreciate that Hyper Studio 5 promotes critical thinking skills, since many of the projects that one can create are interactive and nonlinear projects. So rather than creating a dull slideshow with a bunch of words and pictures, now your students can easily create a dynamic, interactive presentation. So let's get started. I'll begin with an introduction to Hyper Studio 5, and over the next few weeks and months, I'll show you many more incredible things that you can do with Hyper Studio. So let's do it. Here we go. Welcome again to Planet Hyper Studio. As you probably guessed, all the graphics and animations that you've just seen were created in Hyper Studio. Now also, full disclosure, I do not work for Hyper Studio or Software Makiev. I have been a technology and multimedia teacher for many years and have used many different types of software. I just believe that Hyper Studio 5 is the best all-in-one interactive multimedia tool out there, which is why I'm doing this program. So before we start, I want to be sure that you have access to the Hyper Studio 5. If you do not have a copy of it, go to hyperstudio.com and get a free trial. Okay, so this is hyperstudio.com, but it's also, as you can see up here, it's the makiev.com is the company that owns Hyper Studio. This free 30-day trial is a full version of the program. Anything you create is yours to keep. There's no watermark or anything like that. All right, let's take a quick look at a sample project. This is a project done by a fourth grade student in um, San Diego or in California. All the students learn about the California missions. So this is uh, Mission Santa Anise. Ah, yes, sound effects. Here's the main menu. Student uh, starts off with something on the Padres. The read something here. Go back to the main menu. Each student is given their own mission, and they're given certain things that they have to that they have to talk about. So let's take a look at the condition now. Get some photos. You can uh, get narration of the text sometimes. And here's one of my favorite features. Let's check out the location. Okay, it's in Santa Barbara. That's interesting. And what happens if we click up here? See exact location. Let's check this out. 
Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, you guessed it. Google Earth. And understand that the student had to program their KMZ file to get this exact viewpoint. That's pretty powerful, I think. Okay, so that gives you a brief idea of what can be done with Hyper Studio. Okay, so now I'm going to give you some important things to understand about Hyper Studio. This is the heart of Hyper Studio. Hyper Studio uses four simple building blocks to create any multimedia project. First one is text, of course, that's easy enough. Movies you can create or embed in your stack. Paint and graphic tools, there's lots of things you can do. There's built-in graphics and there's also, it's really easy to create your own through all the paint tools. And the last one is buttons. It's very simple for anybody to turn anything into a button and make it do anything. And I will get into that later because it's a little more advanced, but it's really pretty simple. And then there's the inspector, which is the common control for all of these tools. It's just one simple skill set that can be used to make many different kinds of projects. Let's go to the next page here. Okay, so we're going to take a look at these concepts of Hyper Studio. Browsing versus edit mode, buttons, graphics, text, movies, the tools, and the inspector. First, let's begin with uh, what these tools at the top of the screen here. If you click on the little tools thing right here, that'll, that'll pop up over there, and this is where you have your browse mode, the little hand here that's called browse mode. That's like the play button. If you want to preview what you've done or you're going to present it to someone, you go into browse mode. If you click on the arrow tool, that's edit mode. So, of course, that means that's what you need to do if you're creating your Hyper Studio project. These And the rest of these are your paint tools. If you double click on here, well, first you have to click on your, so we got a paintbrush, choose your uh, color and so on. You have your graphics. This is a library of lots of graphics and backgrounds and text objects. If you click on text objects you'll you'll get something like this and you can type in hello your text. You can move it around and there's my dogs barking. Sorry about that. And also down here at the bottom, this is kind of cool, you can actually adjust the, uh, you, you highlight your letters, you can adjust the size just like this. You don't have to figure out exactly what number you want. Beyond that is your library, which is tons of tons of libraries of graphics and animations and videos that you can uh, incorporate or you can even create your own and add them to your library. These are This is your button library. Up here where you see video, this is going to be some animation. Audio is going to be, a, half of it is your iTunes library, the other half would be would be built-in sound effects. If you go into graphics, same thing. The uh, inspector, you'll notice down here, because I have the uh, text going, this is your text inspector. But if I want to create something else, like let's say I want to make a, a shape. I'm going to do, let's see, choose a color. And so here I'm going to choose a shape. And once I choose the shape, I decide do I want it to be solid or do I want it to have a different color around it or whatever. We'll go solid. So now this is my little shape that I just created. This is just right here on the screen. I can't move it. It's what we call flattened to the background, like the back of a stage. 
But if I want to make that into something that can be animated or can create it into a button, all I need to do is turn it into a graphic object. So the easiest way is just to get your little lasso tool and select the object or the part that you want and it'll snap to the grid as you see and go into objects right here and select convert to graphic object now this is an object it moves around you can put it above things you can turn it into a button you can there's so many things I can't even tell you right now. We're running out of time. I, uh, I want you to explore these tools. Check out the paint tools. Play around with that. Try creating a graphic object. Also, by the way, anything in the library that you, that you select will automatically be a graphic object. But if you don't want it to be a graphic object and you want it to, to be used for something else, put it where you want it. And then you can go back up to Objects and select flatten to background and now this is flattened to background and you can't do anything with it okay I'll see you next time I hope you learn something and keep on playing with Hyper Studio you're gonna love it see you next time Bye.